Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to episode two of Spin Studios, where we'll continue the discussion on what's new with Google Workspace and cover some news on ransomware. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the questions panel, and we'll do our best to have them answered at the end of the show. Now, we're still working from home here at Spin, so bear with us if any te technical difficulties arise. But please let me introduce your host, Dan Barda. Dan, take it away. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining episode two of Spin Studios. We have a really exciting con uh, conversation today, really going to be talking about Google Workspace and security uh, for the healthcare system. I know that's been a lot in the news. We've been hearing of a lot about these ransomware attacks affecting you know, healthcare and hospitals. Uh, and here with me today to speak on this is David, who's our cybersecurity expert. David, why don't you give a little bit of uh, background on yourself? Hey, Dan, thank you for having me here, first of all. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is David. I'm the security expert here at SPIN. So we have our own ransomware research lab where we're constantly analyzing the common trends. Uh, we've been placing a lot of focus on the healthcare um, industry and how it's been infected by ransomware. Um, and overall, I'm here to talk about the recent changes in workspace and how it relates to uh, the healthcare industry as well. Awesome. Awesome. And thank you again for taking time out of your busy Friday to to speak with us. So let's let's go ahead and jump on in if I can share my screen. So first, and it's probably something that we're going to do at the beginning of every one of these shows as Workspace continues to roll out new changes. We're going to touch on the, the some of the new changes that have happened in the last week. So the first one of these we're going to be talking about is the accept Knox in bulk. So you know, a little bit about this one. It's really about just accepting all pending knocks so people can come into your Google Meets. This is pretty, pretty simple stuff. It's going to be nice as if you're hosting some of those live streams or stuff like that. David, do you have, do you have any comments on that? Or have you uh, spoken to anybody about the use of this? I think personally, this is a good idea of scaling from Google. Uh, initially, Meet wasn't intended for large audiences, right? Um, it was a couple of meetings, uh, a couple of people in one meeting. However, now they're showing um, the direction they want to go in, which is the ability uh, to be able to handle mass uh, large meetings. Yeah, yeah. And and do you think maybe it has something to do? I, I believe I was, I was reading something that they're going to allow some form of live streams um, for, for you, maybe, maybe like all hands. I, I believe I read something like that. So there'd be like thousands of available people that could hop into that. So I'm sure that'll make hosting those a little bit easier, right? Yep, uh, I heard notions of that as well. Uh, now you have the recording functionality, right? So all the information is stored and attached to Google Drive. Um, so they're making it very easy uh, for hosts uh, to launch meetings. Awesome, fantastic. And then uh, another meeting, so we're gonna scroll up to the next one. So another uh, big change, and this kind of fits the mold because I know that meet and chat are some big focuses with workspace. So with this one, they're going to be, uh, the chats are going to be unthreaded. Uh, and that's going to by default, and that's going to be, I apologize, I'm looking at it, on the 16th. So, you know, what's your opinion on that? I know a lot of things are changing with chat. I know uh, we've spoken in, you know, in a previous episode about how there's going to be a lot of more sharing there. What are your thoughts on this topic? I think it's time. It's definitely time for these improvements to Google Chat and all the other uh, functionality they've added to it. Um, yeah, working from home, there's going to be a lot of sensitive information being shared online, uh, especially through Google Chat or Google Meet. So uh, this is definitely a must have. And I'm glad to hear that it's going to be released. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be interesting to see how chat evolves over, you know, the next couple of months or to the year. I don't know how long this rollout is going to be, but uh, awesome. Thank you so much. So that's all the updates since the last time that we, we spoke with you guys. And like I said, we'll probably do this at the beginning of every episode just to cover any of the major changes or any of the updates that have been announced. But now kind of switching gears. Um, so the topic of today's episode is going to be, you know, security within uh, the healthcare industry. So we were actually we actually found a fantastic article and this kind of combines with Workspace on uh, uh by forecast uh, talking about some of the Google Workspace, uh, you know, Google Workspace for uh, healthcare. So um, kind of going through this one, you know, David, so these are just some bullet points and I'd love to get your opinion on it as well, just because like I said, you are, you are our cybersecurity expert. So oops, let me move that. So 
This one is talking about secure solutions, uh, you know, securely accessing uh, patient information from from anywhere. Uh, so you you were kind of I know you know a little bit more about workspace than myself. How do you see this kind of the new things that are coming out with workspace and that's going to make that ease of access, you know, easy <laughs> and both secure? So yeah, and th that's a lot of the updates that we've actually seen coming since July and especially in October. Um, I believe there's two factors involved here, right? First, first working from home, um, because we are working from home, we're using Google Workspace, for example, we need that extra security. Um, and second, it's an opportunity for um, providing security to these healthcare industries as well, because for them, the amount of compliance and regulations that they must follow uh, to use these types of applications within their workspace is tremendous. Um, and as we can see, they, they received HIPAA compliant, uh, compliance for major Google services, uh, Gmail Drive and Google Docs, uh, which can extremely help them uh, make their workflows easier. Uh, there's no need for paper anymore, right, in the healthcare industry. Um, you can save all your doc, uh, content on Google Drive. So as long as the security is there, um, which is being added on frequently, um, I believe this is this is very great. Um, one thing we have noticed was in Google Drive, they added the ability to see how much of your data is shared outside of your organization um, and the percent of that. Also, the ability to see what type of data is shared. For example, if it's confidential social security numbers or credit card numbers. So I think the, the more they add on to that, uh, the better it will be for the healthcare industry. Yeah, definitely. And and so for that tracking, is that done in real time for data shared, or is there is there some kind of buffer period? Of so how for, they like ID, you know, social security number. That's the example you use. Is is there a buffer period, or is it like instant? As soon as something's shared, they you know, there's just something so comes up to let you know. We are working with the cloud, so it's uh, there is a little bit of a buffer involved, which uh, so that's why we we know, we always say near real time. Uh, we can't afford to say near uh, real time itself. Um, right. But through API, you know, that happens almost instantaneously. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So some really cool security features here. Um, and you kind of touched on this a little bit. So we talked about Meet, but so they're talking about telemedicine with video conferencing. What do you think the implications are that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, obviously sensitive information happening in those mm -hmm. conversations with yourself and uh, your physician. So using Google Meet, you know, do you think it's secure? Do you think that, you know, this is something that is good or do you think that this could lead to some, maybe, you know, someone hopping in and being able to access that information? That's a very good question. And there was a lot of worry in me. Uh, I'm sure you know, you've know you heard as well when the work from home started. Uh, you remember when uh, universities using Zoom, they would get uh, a person joining in, abusing everyone and then leaving. And that was a common trend for about a couple of weeks. Um, so that raised a lot of worry in people because is it safe enough for me to use Zoom or is it safe enough for me to use Google Meet? And uh, Google Meet has released a lot of functionality. So uh, I was checking out their blogs and what they released was, I believe, classification, audit logs, and detection capabilities uh, for just Google Meet itself. Uh, meaning, you know, they're taking a look at the history of a user who's constantly being joined, uh, joining meetings. Are they being kicked out? Are they being reported by other users? And these are all uh, collected and uh, used as feedback for the following meetings that they join. So Meet has placed a lot of security functionality, and this is good to weed out all those imposters, um, all the people who should not be there. In terms of security, the data is encrypted. Um, so any the, all the conversation history that is happening within Meet itself or just the meeting um, is encrypted. So I think it's a very good step direction, a uh, very uh, good step uh, to the future. And this will allow just more than uh, you know one-on-one -on -one conversations. You can make healthcare accessible accessible for everyone. Um, so as long as we beef up the security um, and as long as this works, then uh, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's funny that you bring up uh, people hopping into Zoom calls. So uh, my mom is actually a professor. So I, I heard about those things oh, firsthand. Yeah. yeah, and I had to try to be uh, her IT team. <laughs> and now she thought yeah. she was doing something wrong in her end. It's so, crazy. You yeah, see no, all those videos from UCLA as well. And it was just, just hopping in. It, yeah. was, it was definitely ridiculous. Definitely ridiculous. Um, this portion, they're talking about easy mobile healthcare. So Kind of this is more just talking in chat and you know kind of looking at the rest of the pages automating workflows 
-hmm. it looks like with this, they're sharing a lot of the information. So we've kind of touched on that a little bit, but sharing stuff like, you know, we'll just right here, it's x-ray, CT scans, you know, voice video messages. These are all in very, very, you know, not things that you want outside actors to have. I don't know exactly what someone would do with, uh, you know, like an x-ray. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the benefit that is to a hacker, but that's still information you don't want leaked. Do you think that there's enough in place right now that these hospitals and these healthcare organizations will be able to share stuff like that and be confident within G Drive or, or, or do you have any pause with that at all? So uh, just one clarification I need here, is this custom uh, patients sharing data with healthcare professionals or healthcare professionals sharing data between themselves? Um, I, I, so if we look right here and just going off the article, it says uh, share drives through an entire care team. So I, I believe it's oh, gonna be yeah. in the hospital itself, yeah. Um, yeah, if it's in the hospital with, um, itself uh, within the organization, uh, then I see no problem with that being done. The The major issue that comes with Google Drive sharing is the ability for a person to share to anyone, anyone that has a Google account, right? So that can be an individual, that can be a different organization. Uh, so data leak is the only issue that I see. Um, and as long as with the new functionality and workspace where you're able to limit uh, where data can be shared to, who data can be shared with, um, and you keep the data within the organization. So this confidential data, X-ray scans, you know, CT scans, um, those cannot be leaked. Those are sensitive patient information. Um, as long as that security is placed and that automation uh, for maintaining that uh, data within the organization is placed, uh, this is uh, a good way uh, to streamline data within the hospitals as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and and to that point, I think it's important if you know maybe it stays within the care team because then if you're sharing that to you know my personal Gmail account, my personal Gmail account might be a little less secure than you know the doctors at Kaiser Permanente. I think they they have a little bit more wrapped around that. Um, and then kind of the last part of this is you know one centralized hub. So it's you know with their Google sites, you know this is obviously just something for them to kind of host all the information. I know that we we have a Google site that we hosted, you know, again, I, I know that it says it supports HIPAA compliance, but mm -hmm. do you see like maybe stuff could be on there? Maybe someone could get access to that or, you know, what are, what are your views around the security of Google sites? So the, the question as to getting access that, um, you know, the, with all the security being there, access can be still given. Uh, that's on, it can be human error, it can be phishing emails, uh, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to, we'll talk about that in a second, actually. Um, as to the security itself for Google Sites, um, as you can see in the, here, it mentions that it's a combination of Google Drive files, right? Because a site is a collection of data um, that you collect from Google Drive. So it follows the same security functionality of Google Drive. Um, and as to the general security itself, um, it, it looks fine. But as to gaining access, that's a different situation where third party applications come into place and that's a whole another realm of security that needs to be placed on the organization. Um, so is it impenetrable? No, uh, but the, the security that's built in uh, and the ability for it to be a big compliance is uh, great. Awesome, yeah, no, that and that makes total sense. And you kind of alluded to it. So, you know, we're talking about a lot of the good things that are happening in workspace and kind of the positives, but what really drove this conversation, you know, had us say, hey, let's talk about healthcare was the recent rash of uh, Ryuk ransomware attacks. Uh, am I saying that correctly? It's Ryuk, Ru Ruka? Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'd <laughs> but um, yeah, let's let's go over to there right now. So this was actually something that, that I was reading, you know, that, you know, they were using Google Drives to infect hospitals with ransomware, specifically with the, the Ryuk ransomware. You know, what are your thoughts on that? I know we talked a lot about you know, Google has a lot of security features in place. They're doing a lot of things correctly, but it looks like some of that's slipping through. So, you know, what are your thoughts on this? You know, how are they gaining access? You know, what's what what can people do to stop it? That's a pretty good question. Um, so, Ryuk, if we're going to focus on Ryuk itself, um, it was the most common this year, I believe, right? Um, there was a statistic going around where it's like 70, uh, 67 million uh, Ryuk attacks happened in just quarter three itself. Uh, which just shows that you know they are seeing it successful and they are continuing to do so. Um, and it was more mainly focused in the fo focus on the healthcare industry. I, th I think 
I can relate it to two reasons. The first is the healthcare industry cannot go fully work from home, right? Uh, that's one of the key industries where they're still going to be in the hospitals, they're still, still going to be working from there, uh, so they're still going to have access to their, their local devices in the workplace. And that is usually the end goal for cyber criminals because that's where all the sensitive information lies. Um, and that's the second thing actually too, is because healthcare industries um, carry a lot of sensitive information. So I think those are the two reasons that the RIU itself targeted uh, majority health of healthcare uh, companies and uh, hospitals. Now, as to security, um, sorry, did you want to comment on that? Oh, yeah, no, you can go ahead. I, I was just going to kind of focus in on how they were doing that. But yeah, go ahead with with that security piece. Yeah, uh, as to security, um, so the way Riot worked was it would send a generic uh, phishing email to a user. Uh, but instead of just the file attached to uh, the email where you install it to a, download it to a local device, uh, this one actually contained a Google Drive uh, docs link. Um, so this was surprising to, you know, for cyber, cyber criminals to shift towards to. Now, when you clicked on that link, it led you to the Google Drive page. It said this uh, information is not available. Uh, and actually, Google had provided warnings towards this document, towards this uh, file that was sent uh, to the user. Um, and even mentioned that malicious attachments are detected and even some are blocked. Um, so Google did its job, you can say, in this matter. Um, it provided all the security. Um, it mentioned the warnings that can, uh, and all the risks that can come with opening this email. However, one employee was able to click on the email, and uh, what it did was it launched an executable um, installation that downloaded to a local device. So it downloaded a file to a local device, and it ran itself, um, therefore gaining access to their local network. And then through the local network, it was able to gain administrative credentials. And now you went from one user to uh, being able to handle everyone in the organization. Wow, well, that's pretty powerful. So it's just that one person that has to click, you know, click accept or say, you know, OK, I yeah, click through. And then that compromises everyone's data, right? Uh, exactly what happened. Exactly. It was able to uh, download itself to the local device and gain access to the entire network. Uh, just based off one Google Drive link. Wow, wow, that's that's pretty wild. And and from what I've I've learned about Ryuk, it's it's a pretty invasive and in, uh, ransomware. And like you said, it's it's probably the most widely used one out there today. Um, you know, with with this, do you think that there's a shift happening? I mean, that it's kind of interesting that they're sending you know Google Drive. Uh, you know, links to people where before you know, <laughs> I was laughing earlier talking about how you know back in the day back in the early 2000s you know you know it was so bad those you know those links they'd send you was so obviously fake so looks like things are changing you know kind of how can people combat this or you know what it, how do we fight back i mean because this this is pretty interesting this is the first time i've heard of them using google drive to launch these attacks what are your thoughts on protecting against this or you know how do we kind of stop this going forward that's a good question. So uh, uh, first, I want to touch on the attack itself, and then I'll, I'll answer your question as to what we can do to stop it. Uh, on the attack itself, uh, what is extraordinary about this is, again, that it was through Google Drive, uh, Google Docs link. Now, what that means is they were, through Google Drive, they were able to access the local network. But through Google Drive, they can gain access to the entire cloud itself as well, of the user uh, of all the cloud services. So this is just showing that the cyber criminals are adapting as well. Um, they have found ways and uh, that are successful in gaining access to cloud data. Um, so you know, for the healthcare industry, we saw that it went to the local device and uh, connected to the entire network. Uh, but we may now continue seeing for those working from home businesses, um, you know, gain, uh, cyber criminals gaining access to their uh, entire workspace services. So that's something to watch out for. Um, and the next thing as to answering your question uh, to how to stop it, uh, first, it comes with training, right? The, you're going to need to train the employees more on uh, seeing all this information, especially when Google provided multiple warnings. That's something that uh, requires extra attention uh, before clicking. Um, and the second is just having the necessary tools in place to stop that from spreading. Um, so any security tool that is monitoring behavior, um, I believe, is needed in order to uh, monitor and take action uh, when needed. 
Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And, um, you know, so uh, an interesting bit that I had read when, you know, was looking into to Ryuk is, you know, kind of the opposite of what you said before there. So they're targeting a lot of healthcare because people are there. Do you see that maybe that this could start targeting, you know, individuals that are working from home because, you know, maybe, and maybe, maybe it's not so much now because we've been working from home for feels like a few years, even though it's been, you know, only mm-hmm. about eight months, but you know, we're so used to, and I kind of fell into this as well, being behind that, you know, security cover, those firewalls, you know, whatever it was when you're sitting at your office. So do you think that maybe with people working from home, now there's more of an issue now, you know, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's how sometimes they're getting into maybe someone, you know, they're not sitting in the office, so they're not expecting to get attacked. Do you think that could play into anything as well as, as this kind of moves forward? Or, or do you think it's really just going to affect the people that are, you know, having to stay in the office? Or I guess. No, the- uh, I, I believe you raised a good point. For those working from home, um, they're still vulnerable. They're still, uh, you know, a target, especially because, uh, like you mentioned, they don't have their the network security that they had placed in the office. Um, and I know a lot of organizations who are, you know, using their own personal laptops if they if they don't have, um, any company given one to access their company data. So that just creates more vulnerabilities. Uh, but besides that, again, um, what we saw was the cloud being able to be penetrated. And in a situation of everyone working from home, everyone is also adopting cloud tools. Um, so that's the second warning of, uh, you know, watching out for uh, these types of phishing emails because you are now an easier target. Yeah, yeah, and and that you kind of made me think of something interesting. So in that attack, you talked about they utilize Google Drive to get access to a local area network and you know take files that way. But as you kind of mentioned, there's a really high adoption of now these new cloud platforms or cloud services. Google Drive is hosted in the cloud, and they yes. already had access that way. So do you see maybe this could be turned into a thing where it's not attacking a local area network that now hey we're already in the cloud let's let's you know do some damage here do you see that that could be a possibility as well definitely definitely i see that trend that happening a lot especially uh what we talked about today right the healthcare industry wants to utilize google workspace services they want to store data in drive um they want to store data in mail and chat and meet um so what is that going to do that's going to focus uh, change the focus of cyber criminals now onto that cloud as well um, because they're not going to store anything on the local devices anymore, uh, on the local networks. And that's where the direction is going to go. And uh, I believe the common cloud tools are the ones that need to be beef up their security the most. Now, what we saw is uh, Google Docs link able to uh, download a file to the local device and run it executable. Now, it may not be a link that's sent. Uh, next, it will be a link to an application that you installed and you grant full access to your Google Workspace account. Um, again, they now have access, they can launch a ransomware attack um, and encrypt all the files in your Workspace services. So it's as a possibility, it's possible. And because of the shift to the cloud tools, because of uh, the data shifting to the cloud, besides a company shifting to the cloud as well, um, the focus of cyber criminals will of course shift as well. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you, and that and that's a, a fantastic point. And it, it kind of made me think of, of something else. So you had, you had said, hey, you know, download this application or or, or this extension. So in, in just and I completely understand we're looking at one article here, so there could be some stuff that, that we're not seeing. But they didn't really talk about security around extensions. They didn't really talk mm-hmm. about you know you know something like that. And you know, I know for working from home, I have. Uh, you guys can even see them on the screen. I have, I have just a few there. Those are only the ones that I show. There's probably about 15, 20 more. Do you see that that could, you know, as they're trying to access the cloud or, you know, they send a Google Drive to download, You could you see extensions or those kind of applications that grant those permissions starting to become a target of, you know, these cyber criminals? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, it's already being done as well. We've seen ransom attacks in the cloud. Um, so with extensions, there's around 277,000 extensions out there in the uh, Chrome Web Store. Now that's a crazy amount, um, you, and maintaining security of all of those is pretty difficult for you know manual assessments, whether it's checking what access they have. Um, so that's going to ca- cause a lot of headaches and open up a room, 
a lot of room for vulnerability. So what we see organizations doing is either blocking everything, which does create more headaches because now you need those extensions um, or applications and they're blocked, or they grant access to everything, which is also risky because um, the possible risks that these apps or extensions can impose uh, on your data, um, especially with extensions, because what we noticed is uh, sometimes they request access to not just your workspace account, but also access to store data on your local device. Um, so, hey, maybe that's another entry point. Um, and applications, you know, when you install an applications from any marketplace or are connected to your Google account, um, sometimes they request permissions to see your data, to view your data, but other times they request full access, for example, edit, view, delete access to your Gmail or Drive and so forth. Um, and that access is pretty, pretty huge. Uh, that's basically you logging into your Drive and the application has the same access to log into your drive and manage it. And, you know, maybe that application itself is breached and now in turn has access to your Google Drive or um, the application is malicious just waiting to get access to your data. Um, it's something to watch out for. So application security and application management is something that should be on the top of the list of any security company or just any security team in general. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, Really good point there. Really good point, David. So uh, that's kind of all of our points today. Um, would love to see Jeremy. Do we do we have any questions in the chat? Anything that you know people are kind of wanting us to review? Yeah, we we have a couple here. And uh, so the first first question that I have was asked um, as you were uh, describing the the Ryuk ransomware. But let me just. Um, uh, tell you the question. So how do you see ransomware evolving throughout 2021? Obviously, it's an increasing trend and the cloud exposures, but what else should we be looking out for? Yeah, that, thank you so much, Sharon. That's a fantastic question. And David, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. You, you know, you've been talking a lot about this. What, do you kinda, what, what are your thoughts on that? What do you see as the future of ransomware? Um, that's a good question. So the way I see ransomware and the way it has evolved over time, um, and we talked about this during uh, our call today too, um, is it goes where the data is. It focuses on where the important data is, right? That's their end goal. They want to gain access to their data somehow in order to make money off it. It's a business. Um, that's how ransomware works. Um, so working from home, adopting cloud tools, um, you know, and that's only going to be increasing. I feel like uh, working from home may even never be over. Um, because most organizations, most companies that now I see are even giving a choice of working remotely or in person. Um, and in both situations, cloud, uh, cloud tools are still going to be used. So in my professional opinion, the full focus of ransomware attacks is going to be on the cloud in the next year. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Especially yeah. tools like this, uh, Workspace, Office 365, um, you know, there's a lot of data besides emailing, you have your drives, um, you know, you're storing a lot of data within them. So um, definitely a target. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, totally agree with you. And we can definitely see that that trend, you know, it's more and more with uh, what we talked about today, you know, more and more people are using utilizing the cloud. So it makes sense that hackers are going to be targeting that as we push forward. Uh, Jeremy, any other questions? Yeah, got one more for you guys. Um, since ransomware is launched primarily primarily via phishing, isn't email security a sufficient means of ransomware protection? Uh, that's a very tough question too. So I would say no. Um, and at the, at the end of the day, um, human error can just uh, outweigh any sort of security. And especially we talked about Ryuk, right? Uh, where an email was sent, Google even marked it as suspicious or spam containing malicious links or and even blocked some of them. And you can read on this um, on the Ryuk ransomware uh, research that you do. Um, but the user ended up still clicking on the link. Um, so no security is ever enough. That's what we always like to say. The more security, the better. Uh, and just email security itself will not stop uh, from ransomware attacks, especially uh, because Google Docs or any application that you install requesting access to it um, that is done outside of email. Um, for example, any extension or application that you install and it requests access, um, email security won't be able to protect you from there as well. So, no, I, I don't believe email security is enough for full protection. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. That was, that was a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to agree with you. You're, you're the expert in this field, but um, and Jeremy, it, that was the last question, correct? Yep. That was it. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, that wraps it up for this uh, episode of Spin Studios. Again, we're doing this every single Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to have the next uh, the next topic sent out to you guys probably in the in the next couple of days. You know, keep you guys on your toes a little bit. But uh, want to thank you, David, for taking time out of your day again to come speak with us. You know, I, obviously you're much more well well versed in this cybersecurity and, and with Ryuk. So fantastic to get your point of view. And again, thank you everyone for joining today. If you have any questions, you can reach me at Spin Studios at spintech.ai or at Dan B at spintech.ai. But until then, everyone, I hope you guys have a fantastic Friday, and we'll look forward to speaking with you guys next week. Thank you.